Nerithia hovered silently above the bustling streets of New York City, her ethereal form cloaked in the advanced invisibility technology of her people. From this vantage point she could observe the humans below, going about their daily lives with an energy and fervor that fascinated her. They were so full of contradictions, capable of both incredible kindness and unthinkable cruelty. Her mission was clear, to study these beings, gather intelligence, and report back to Zephyra. Earth, with its vast resources and strategic location in the galaxy, was of great interest to her home planet. But Narithia couldn't help but feel a twinge of something unfamiliar as she watched them. Despite their flaws, there was something undeniably captivating about these humans. Perhaps it was their resilience, their creativity, or the way they pursued their desires with such reckless abandon. Whatever it was, it drew her in, even as she reminded herself that she was here for a mission, not for personal indulgence. Her thoughts were interrupted as a curious figure caught her eye, a man, tall and lean, with tousled dark hair and a look of deep concentration on his face as he examined an old weathered map in his hands. He was unlike the others she had observed. There was an intensity about him, a sense of purpose that intrigued her. Little did she know that this man, Kalen Draven, would soon become the center of her world, challenging everything she thought she knew about loyalty, duty, and love. Nyrithia slipped seamlessly into her human guise, her alien features morphing into those of an ordinary woman with long chestnut hair, bright green eyes, and a mischievous smile that could disarm even the most guarded of hearts. She had chosen a small, quiet cafe near the university, where she could blend in and observe the humans more closely. It was here that she planned to make her first real contact with one of them, to learn more about their culture, their beliefs, and what made them tick. As she sipped her coffee, still getting used to the bitter, earthy taste, her gaze drifted to the door where the man she had seen earlier stepped inside. He looked slightly disheveled, his clothes rumpled, as if he had been working tirelessly without a break, but there was a spark in his eyes, a curiosity that matched her own. Kalen Draven had spent the last few weeks chasing down leads on an ancient artifact rumored to have extraterrestrial origins. His colleagues thought him obsessed, perhaps even a bit mad, but he knew he was onto something big. And now, as he scanned the cafe, his eyes locked onto Nyrithia, who was busy pretending to read a book she had picked up on a whim. Mind if I join you? he asked, flashing her a grin that was equal parts charming and roguish. Nerithia looked up, feigning surprise. Oh, sure, I don't mind at all, she replied, her voice carrying the slightest hint of an accent she had modeled after a popular television series. Kalen slid into the seat across from her, setting down his bag with a thud. I couldn't help but notice you're reading the history of the stars, he said, nodding to the book. A fellow stargazer, I presume? Nyrithia smiled, amused by the irony. Something like that. I've always been fascinated by what's out there, the unknown, the mysteries of the universe. Kalen leaned forward, his interest piqued. Same here. I've spent my life searching for answers, trying to uncover the secrets buried in ancient history. You'd be amazed at what's out there, just waiting to be discovered. Their conversation flowed easily, each of them drawn to the other's passion and intellect. Narithia found herself laughing at Kalen's dry humor, while he was captivated by her quick wit and insightful questions. For the first time since arriving on Earth, Narithia felt a connection, a real human connection that went beyond her mission. But as they talked, Narithia couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than just a chance encounter. There was something about Kalen, something she couldn't quite put her finger on, that made her want to know more. And that, she realized with a pang of unease, could be dangerous. Days turned into weeks as Narithia and Kalen spent more time together. What had started as a simple curiosity had blossomed into a deep and genuine friendship. Narithia found herself looking forward to their conversations, eagerly anticipating the moments they would spend together in the quiet corners of the library or during their walks through the city's parks. Kalen, for his part, was equally drawn to Narithia. She was unlike anyone he had ever met. Sharp, insightful, and with a perspective on life that was refreshingly different from the narrow-minded academics he usually dealt with. She challenged him, made him question his assumptions, and pushed him to think beyond the boundaries of what he knew. One evening, as they sat on a bench overlooking the Hudson River, Kalen turned to Narithia with a serious expression. "'There's something I've been wanting to ask you,' he began, his voice unusually hesitant. Narithia tilted her head, curious. "'What is it?' 
It's about that artifact I've been studying. The one I mentioned before. The more I dig into it, the more I'm convinced it's not of this world. There's something about it. Something... alien. He paused, watching her reaction carefully. Nerithia's heart skipped a beat, but she kept her expression neutral. What makes you think that? Kalin shrugged, though his eyes were intense. Call it a hunch. Or maybe it's just that I've always believed we're not alone in the universe. I don't know, but there's something about this artifact that feels different. Like it's not just a piece of history, but a message. A message from another world. Nerithia's mind raced. Could it be that Kalin was closer to the truth than she had realized? If so, it could jeopardize not only her mission, but also his safety. She had to tread carefully. That's an interesting theory, she said, choosing her words with care. But don't you think it's possible that it's just an ancient relic from an old civilization here on Earth? Humans have been around for a long time, after all. Kalin shook his head, a determined glint in his eyes. Maybe, but I can't shake the feeling that there's more to it than that. And I'm going to find out no matter what it takes. Nyrithia smiled, though her heart was heavy with conflicting emotions. She admired Kalin's determination, his relentless pursuit of the truth. But she also knew that if he got too close to the answers, it could mean the end of everything. For him, for her, and for Earth. As they walked back to the city, the night air cool and crisp around them, Nyrithia's thoughts were a whirlwind of conflicting loyalties. She had a mission to complete, a duty to her people. But at the same time, she couldn't deny the growing feelings she had for Kaelin, feelings that made her question everything she had been taught, everything she believed in. And that, she realized with a pang of fear, was the most dangerous thing of all. Kaelin's determination to uncover the truth about the artifact grew stronger with each passing day. He spent hours poring over ancient texts, consulting with experts, and analyzing every detail he could find. But the more he dug, the more questions he uncovered, and the more time he spent with Nerithia, the more he began to suspect that she was somehow connected to the mystery. One afternoon, while Nerithia was helping Kalin sort through a pile of old documents in his cluttered office, he suddenly turned to her, his eyes filled with a mix of curiosity and suspicion. Nerithia, he began, his tone serious, there's something I need to know. You seem to have a lot of knowledge about things that most people don't, and you have this way of looking at the world that's different. Are you hiding something from me? Nyrithia's heart pounded in her chest. She had been careful, so careful, not to reveal too much about herself. But Kalin was perceptive, and it was clear that he was starting to piece things together. What do you mean? she asked, keeping her voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Kalin hesitated, then took a deep breath. I don't know exactly. But I've been thinking, what if this artifact isn't just a relic of some ancient civilization? What if it's something more, something extraterrestrial? And what if you know more about it than you're letting on? For a moment there was silence between them. Nerithia felt a wave of panic rising inside her, but she forced it down, reminding herself of her mission. She couldn't afford to let her emotions get in the way. I think you're letting your imagination run wild, she said with a light laugh hoping to deflect his suspicions. I'm just someone who's interested in history and culture, that's all. But Kalin didn't look convinced. He studied her for a long moment, his eyes searching hers for any sign of deception. Finally, he sighed and shook his head. Maybe you're right, he said, though his voice was tinged with doubt. But I can't help feeling like there's more to this than meets the eye. And more to you, too. Nyrithia forced a smile, though her heart was heavy. She knew that Kalin's instincts were sharp, and it was only a matter of time before he uncovered the truth. And when that happened, she would have to make a choice, one that could change everything. That night, as she lay awake in her small apartment, Nerithia's mind was consumed with thoughts of Kalin. She had tried so hard to keep her distance, to remain focused on her mission. But the truth was, she had grown to care for him more than she ever thought possible, and that made her vulnerable in a way she had never been before. She knew she couldn't keep up the charade forever. Sooner or later, Kalin would discover who she really was. And when that happened, she would have to decide where her true loyalties lay, with her people or with the man she had come to love. 
As the days passed, Nerithia found it increasingly difficult to keep up the facade. Her feelings for Kaelin had grown deeper, more complex, and it was becoming harder to reconcile them with her duty to Zephyra. The mission that had once seemed so clear-cut was now clouded with emotions she couldn't control. One evening, as she sat alone in her apartment, she received a message from Zephyra. The communication was brief but stern, reminding her of the importance of her mission and urging her to complete it as soon as possible. Earth, they warned, was a potential threat that needed to be assessed and, if necessary, neutralized. Nyrithia felt a cold dread settle in the pit of her stomach. She had known this day would come, but she hadn't expected it to come so soon. The thought of betraying Kaelin, of betraying the world she had come to care for, filled her with a sense of despair. That night she couldn't sleep. Her mind was a whirlwind of conflicting thoughts and emotions. She knew she had to make a decision, but every option seemed fraught with peril. If she completed her mission, she would be betraying Kaelin and possibly dooming Earth. But if she didn't, she would be betraying her own people, and there was no telling what the consequences of that might be. The next day, as she met Kaelin for their usual coffee at the cafe, she could barely look him in the eye. He noticed her unease immediately. Nerithia, what's wrong? he asked, his voice full of concern. She shook her head, trying to brush it off. It's nothing, just a lot on my mind. But Kaelin wasn't fooled. He reached across the table, gently taking her hand in his. You know you can talk to me, right? Whatever it is, I'm here for you. Nerithia felt tears prick at the corners of her eyes. She had been so careful to keep her emotions in check, but now, in the face of Kaelin's kindness, she felt them threatening to overwhelm her. I... I don't know how to explain it, she said, her voice trembling. There are things about me that you don't know, things that... that I'm not sure you'd understand. Kaelin's expression softened. Try me. Nerithia took a deep breath, steeling herself. She had to tell him, had to make him understand. But just as she was about to speak, a sudden realization struck her. If she told him the truth, it would put him in even greater danger. Zephyra would stop at nothing to protect their mission. And if they found out that she had compromised it... I can't, she whispered, her voice barely audible. I'm sorry, Kalen, but I can't. Kalen looked at her, his eyes filled with a mix of confusion and hurt. Nerithia, whatever it is, we can figure it out together. You don't have to go through this alone. But Nerithia shook her head, tears now streaming down her cheeks. I wish it were that simple, she said, her voice breaking. But there are things you don't understand, things I can't tell you. I'm sorry, Kalen. I wish I could be honest with you, but I just... I can't. Kalen's grip on her hand tightened, as if he were trying to hold on to something that was slipping away. Nerithia, please. But before he could say anything more, she pulled her hand away and stood up, her heart aching with the weight of her decision. I'm sorry, she repeated, her voice barely above a whisper. And with that, she turned and walked out of the cafe, leaving Kalen behind, his heart shattered by the one person he had come to trust above all others. Nerithia knew she couldn't stay away from Kalen forever. Despite the risks, the thought of never seeing him again was unbearable. And so, a few days later, she found herself standing outside his apartment, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and longing. When Kalen opened the door and saw her standing there, his expression was a mixture of relief and frustration. Nyrithia, he said, his voice hoarse, why did you leave like that? I've been going out of my mind trying to figure out what's going on. Nyrithia looked down, unable to meet his gaze. I'm sorry, Kalen. I didn't want to hurt you, but there are things you don't know. Things that I've been hiding from you. Kalen's eyes narrowed. What kind of things? Nyrithia took a deep breath, steeling herself for what she was about to do. Things that are hard to explain, but I'm going to try. Kalen, the truth is, I'm not from this world. I'm an alien, sent here on a mission to gather intelligence on humanity. For a moment there was silence, then Kalen let out a sharp laugh, though there was no humor in it. You're joking, right? This is some kind of elaborate prank. But Nerithia shook her head, her expression deadly serious. I wish it were, but it's the truth. I'm from a planet called Zephyra, and I was sent here to study Earth and its inhabitants. I've been living among you, pretending to be human, but all the while I've been reporting back to my people. Kalen stared at her, his mind racing to process what she had just told him. This is... 
This is insane. You're telling me you're an alien? That everything we've shared, everything you've said to me was a lie? No, Nerithia cried, her voice filled with anguish. Not everything. My feelings for you. They're real, Kaelin. I never expected this to happen. Never expected to fall in love with you. But I did. And now I don't know what to do. Kaelin ran a hand through his hair, trying to make sense of it all. If what you're saying is true, then why are you telling me this now? What changed? Nerithia's eyes filled with tears. Because I can't keep lying to you. I can't keep pretending that everything is normal when it's not. Kaelin, my people are planning something, something that could put Earth in danger. And I don't want to be a part of it anymore. I want to help you, to protect this world, even if it means betraying my own people. Kaelin looked at her, his heart torn between disbelief and the overwhelming love he felt for her. Nyrithia, I don't know what to say. This is all so much to take in. Nyrithia stepped closer, her eyes pleading. Please, Kaelin, believe me. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm telling you the truth. I don't want to hurt you, and I don't want to see Earth get hurt either. But I can't do this alone. I need your help. For a long moment, Kaelin said nothing. Then, finally, he nodded, though his expression was still one of confusion and uncertainty. Okay, he said slowly. Okay, I believe you, but we're going to need a plan. If your people are really planning something, we have to stop them, together. Nerithia's heart swelled with relief and gratitude. Thank you, Kalen. I don't know what I would do without you. Kalen managed a small smile, though there was still a hint of wariness in his eyes. Well... It's not every day you find out your girlfriend is an alien spy, but I guess we'll figure it out as we go. And so, with their newfound alliance, Nerithia and Kalen set out to uncover the truth about the artifact and stop the Zephyrians from carrying out their plan. It wouldn't be easy, and the stakes were higher than ever, but they were determined to protect each other and the world they both cared for. As they delved deeper into the mystery, their bond grew stronger, forged in the fires of love and war. And though the path ahead was fraught with danger, they knew that as long as they were together, they could face anything. Nyrithia and Kaelin spent the next few days working tirelessly to devise a plan. Nerithia used her knowledge of Zephyrian technology to help Kaelin decipher the clues hidden within the artifact. They discovered that it was a beacon designed to send a signal back to Zephyra, indicating that Earth was a viable target for invasion. Kalin's heart sank as the full implications of their discovery hit him. So that's it, he said grimly. Your people are planning to invade Earth. Nerithia nodded, her expression filled with guilt and sorrow. Yes, but we can stop them. If we can disable the beacon before it sends the signal, we can buy Earth more time. But how? Kalin asked, his mind racing. We don't even know where the signal is supposed to be sent from. Nerithia hesitated, then finally said, I know where it is. It's at a hidden facility not far from here. I can take you there, but it's heavily guarded. We'll need to be careful. Kalin nodded. We'll figure it out. We have to. But before they could finalize their plans, a sudden knock on the door interrupted them. Nerithia's heart skipped a beat, and she quickly motioned for Kalin to stay quiet. She approached the door cautiously, her senses on high alert. When she opened it, she was met with the last person she wanted to see a fellow Zephyrian agent, one she recognized as Rythor, a loyal soldier of Zephyra. Nerithia, Rythor said, his voice cold and authoritative, we need to talk. Nerithia's heart pounded in her chest. Rythor, what are you doing here? I've been sent to check on you, he replied, his eyes narrowing as he glanced at Kalin. It seems you've been compromised. Nerithia tried to keep her voice steady. I'm fine, Rythor. I'm just gathering more intelligence. Rethor's gaze hardened. Do not lie to me, Nyrithia. You've been fraternizing with the enemy, and now you're trying to sabotage the mission. Do you think I wouldn't notice? Kalin stepped forward, his fists clenched. If you're here to hurt her, you'll have to go through me. Rythor sneered. A human, how pathetic. Nyrithia, you've let your emotions cloud your judgment. You were one of our best, and now you've thrown it all away for this, this creature. Nerithia's eyes blazed with anger. He's not just a creature, Raythor. He's a person, someone I care about, and I won't let you or anyone else hurt him. Raythor's expression darkened. Then you leave me no choice. Before Nerithia could react, Raythor lunged at Kalin, his hands crackling with energy. 
but Nerithia was faster. She threw herself between them, taking the full force of Rythor's attack. The impact sent her crashing to the ground, pain searing through her body. Kaelin rushed to her side, his face filled with panic. Nyrithia, are you okay? Nyrithia gritted her teeth, forcing herself to her feet. I'm fine, she gasped, though the pain was nearly overwhelming. But we have to stop him. Kaelin nodded, his expression grim. Let's do it. Together, they fought against Rythor, using every trick and tactic they could think of. It was a brutal battle, one that pushed them to their limits. But in the end, it was Nerithia who delivered the final blow, using her knowledge of Zephyrian anatomy to strike a lethal blow to Rythor's heart. As Rythor collapsed to the ground, his life force fading away, Nerithia felt a wave of sadness wash over her. He had been her ally once, a fellow soldier in the fight for Zephyra. But now, he was just another casualty of the war she had chosen to fight. Kaelin wrapped his arms around her, holding her close as she trembled with the weight of what she had done. You did what you had to do, he whispered, his voice gentle and reassuring. Nerithia nodded, though her heart was heavy. I know, but it doesn't make it any easier. They stood there for a long moment, holding each other as they processed what had just happened. The battle was far from over, and they knew that more challenges lay ahead, but for now, they had each other, and that was enough. As they left the apartment, ready to face whatever came next, Nyrithia couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, they could find a way to stop the invasion and save both Earth and Zephyra. And maybe, in the process, they could find a way to be together, against all odds. The hidden facility was located deep within a dense forest, miles away from any civilization. As Nerithia and Kaelin approached, they could see the faint glow of energy barriers surrounding the entrance. The facility was heavily fortified, with armed guards patrolling the perimeter and automated defenses poised to strike at any intruders. Nerithia knew they would have to be careful. The facility was one of the most secure locations on Earth, and any misstep could result in their capture or worse. But they had no choice. If they didn't disable the beacon, Earth would be doomed. We need to take out those energy barriers first, Nyrithia said, her voice steady despite the tension in the air. Once we're inside, we can make our way to the control room and deactivate the beacon. Kalen nodded, his expression determined. Let's do it. Using a combination of human technology and Zephyrian abilities, they managed to bypass the energy barriers and slip past the guards undetected. The facility was a labyrinth of corridors and chambers, each one filled with advanced technology that was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. As they made their way deeper into the facility, Nerithia couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. She knew Rythor had likely informed their superiors of her betrayal before he died, and it was only a matter of time before they sent more agents to stop her. Finally, they reached the control room, a massive chamber filled with holographic displays and consoles. In the center of the room stood the beacon, a towering structure pulsing with energy. Nerithia could feel the power emanating from it, a reminder of the destructive force it could unleash if activated. This is it, Kalin said, his voice barely above a whisper. What do we do? Nerithia approached the beacon, her mind racing as she searched for a way to disable it. The technology was complex, far beyond anything humans had developed, but she knew it inside and out. After all, it was her people who had built it. We need to overload the power core, she said, her hands moving swiftly over the controls. If we can create a feedback loop, it will cause the entire system to shut down. Kalin watched as Nerithia worked, his heart pounding in his chest. He had never felt so out of his depth, so helpless in the face of such overwhelming power. But he knew he had to trust Nerithia, had to believe that she could do this. Suddenly the room was filled with a blaring alarm, and the doors slammed shut, trapping them inside. Nerithia's heart skipped a beat as she realized what was happening. They had been discovered. We don't have much time, she said, her voice urgent. I need you to hold off the guards while I finish this. Kalin nodded, his expression resolute. I'm on it. As he moved to the door, ready to face whatever came through, Nerithia focused on the task at hand. Her fingers flew over the controls, her mind racing as she tried to stay one step ahead of the facility's automated defenses. The door burst open, and Kalin was immediately met with a barrage of gunfire. He ducked behind a console, returning fire as the guards poured into the room. It was a fierce battle, 
with Kalin fighting for his life as Nerithia worked frantically to disable the beacon. Just as the guards closed in on Kalin, a deafening roar filled the room. Nerithia had done it. The power core overloaded, sending a wave of energy through the facility and knocking out the lights. The guards were thrown to the ground, their weapons short-circuited by the surge. Kalin rushed to Nerithia's side as the room plunged into darkness, his heart pounding with adrenaline. Is it done? Nerithia nodded, her face pale but determined. Yes, the beacon is disabled. Earth is safe. For now. Kalin let out a breath he hadn't realized he was holding. We did it! But their victory was short-lived. As the lights flickered back on, they were met with the sight of a new threat. Zephyrian reinforcements, led by an elite warrior known as Vern. He was taller than any human, his body encased in sleek alien armor that glowed with an eerie blue light. Nyrithia, Vern said, his voice cold and menacing, you have betrayed your people. Surrender now and I may show you mercy. Nerithia stepped forward, her expression defiant. I will never surrender to you, Vern. I'm fighting for something bigger than Zephyra, something worth more than my life. Vern sneered. And what is that, this pathetic human? No, Nerithia replied, her voice filled with resolve. I'm fighting for love, for the chance to build a future where our worlds don't have to be enemies, where we can coexist in peace. Vern's eyes narrowed. You are a fool, Nyrithia, and now you will die for your foolishness. With that, Vern lunged at her, his weapon aimed at her heart. But Nerithia was ready. Using the last of her energy, she unleashed a powerful blast of her own, catching Vern off guard and sending him crashing into the wall. Kalin ran to her side, his heart racing with fear. Nerithia, are you okay? She nodded weakly, her strength waning. I'm fine, but we need to get out of here before more reinforcements arrive. Kalin helped her to her feet, and together they made their way out of the facility, leaving the disabled beacon and the fallen Vern behind. As they emerged into the night, the cool air filled their lungs, a welcome relief after the intensity of the battle. But Nerithia knew their fight was far from over. The Zephyrians would not give up so easily, and there would be more challenges to face in the days ahead. But as she looked at Kalin, she felt a surge of hope. They had faced impossible odds and come out on top, and as long as they were together, she knew they could face whatever the future held. In the weeks that followed, Nyrithia and Kalin stayed on the move, avoiding detection by both human authorities and Zephyrian agents. They knew they were living on borrowed time, but they were determined to make the most of it. Nyrithia's decision to disable the beacon had effectively severed her ties to Zephyra. She was a fugitive now, hunted by her own people for her betrayal. But she had no regrets. She had chosen love over duty, and she would make that choice again in a heartbeat. As they traveled from city to city, Nyrithia and Kalin grew even closer, their bond deepening with each passing day. They shared their hopes and dreams, their fears and uncertainties. And through it all, they found solace in each other's arms, knowing that they had something truly special. One evening, as they sat on a rooftop overlooking a bustling city, Kalin turned to Nerithia with a serious expression. What happens now? he asked. We can't keep running forever. Nerithia looked up at the stars, her eyes filled with a mixture of sadness and determination. I don't know, she admitted, but I do know that I want to be with you, Kalin. No matter what happens, no matter where we go, I want to be by your side. Kalin reached out and took her hand, his grip firm and reassuring. I feel the same way, but we need a plan. We need to figure out how to stay safe, how to build a life together in a world that wants to tear us apart. Nyrithia nodded, her mind racing with possibilities. Maybe we can find a place where we can hide, somewhere remote and off the grid. We could start over, live a simple life away from all of this. Kalin smiled, though there was a hint of sadness in his eyes. That sounds nice, but what about your people? Won't they keep coming after us? Nyrithia sighed, her heart heavy with the weight of her decisions. Yes, they will, but I'm willing to fight for our future, Kalin. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to protect what we have. Kalin looked at her, his eyes filled with love and admiration. I don't deserve you, Nerithia, but I'm grateful every day that you're in my life. Nerithia smiled, leaning in to kiss him softly. And I'm grateful for you, Kalin. 
You've shown me a world I never thought I could be a part of, a world worth fighting for. They sat in silence for a while, watching the city lights flicker below them. Despite the uncertainty of their future, they found comfort in each other's presence, knowing that they were stronger together than they ever could be apart. As the night wore on, Nerithia felt a sense of peace settle over her. She had made her choice, and she was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. She had found love in the most unlikely of places, and she was determined to protect it with everything she had. And as she looked up at the stars, she knew that no matter what happened, their love would endure. It was a love that transcended worlds, a love that defied the odds, and it was a love that would guide them through whatever the future held. Years had passed since that fateful night when Nyrithia and Kaelin had made the decision to be together against all odds. They had found a remote cabin in the mountains, far away from the prying eyes of both human authorities and Zephyrian agents. It was a simple life, but it was a life they had built together, a life filled with love and peace. Nerithia had never regretted her decision to stay on Earth. She had found a home here, a place where she could be herself without fear of judgment or persecution. And most importantly, she had found Kalin, the man who had shown her what it meant to truly live. As she stood on the porch of their cabin, watching the sun set over the mountains, Nyrithia felt a deep sense of contentment. She had everything she had ever wanted, everything she had ever dreamed of. Kalin joined her on the porch, wrapping his arms around her as they watched the sky turn shades of pink and orange. It's beautiful, he said softly. Nerithia nodded, leaning into him. Yes, it is, but not as beautiful as the life we've built together. Kalin smiled, kissing the top of her head. I couldn't agree more. They stood there for a while, savoring the peacefulness of the moment. But as the stars began to appear in the night sky, Nerithia's thoughts drifted to the future. She knew that their time on Earth was limited, that one day they would have to leave this world behind. But she also knew that wherever they went, as long as they were together, they would be okay. Nyrithia, Kalin said, breaking the silence, do you ever think about what's out there, beyond the stars? Nyrithia smiled, her eyes twinkling with mischief. All the time. But I also know that what matters most is right here, with you. Kalin chuckled, pulling her closer. You always know just what to say. They shared a quiet laugh, their hearts full of love and happiness. And as they looked up at the stars, they knew that their journey was far from over. There were still so many adventures to be had, so many worlds to explore. But for now they were content to simply be together, to enjoy the life they had built and the love they had found. And as they stood there, wrapped in each other's arms, they knew that no matter where their journey took them, their love would endure. It was a love that had withstood the test of time, a love that had brought them through the darkest of days. And it was a love that would guide them through whatever the future held, beyond the stars and into the great unknown.